Hi, I'm Mark from Kicker Software and today I'm going to be showing you how you can use Kicker to analyse the player pool tendencies on the river based on the hand histories you've imported into the software. So you can get to the screen via the button in the bottom right hand corner of the main screen here. So if I just select it and I'll just briefly talk you through what we're looking at here. On the left hand side are a load of filters which we'll come to these in a few minutes. What we're seeing on the right hand side is a graph and this graph is labelled as equity against a random hand. So what this is showing us is every time there was a river decision to be made by a player, so they were, they were facing a river bet and they were having to decide whether they were going to call or fold or in some cases raise, but this feature is particularly useful when you're trying to determine whether it's, it's worth calling or whether you should fold. And what this is demonstrating is effectively how often those players are value betting versus how often they're bluffing. So what we're seeing here is the hand that the player that made the bet, the initial bet on the river, had, and what the equity of that hand was against the board, just against a random hand. So it gives you an idea of the strength of the hand. So down here, like where the hand just had equity of less than 40% or less than 50% against a random hand. They're just bluffs. They don't think that those hands are going to win at showdown. They're betting them because they think it's the only way they can win the hand. Hands that float around this area, maybe below 60%, probably still largely bluffs. In this area, say between kind of mid 50s to kind of 70%, they may be thin value bets. Anything above mid 70s is is probably a value bet and certainly anything above 80 is is definitely a value bet some of this is a little bit contingent on exactly what the run out was and exactly what the action has been and so forth but we can filter for some of that information which I'll show you in a minute now just looking at this information without any contacts of a board or a hand it might be a little bit hard to get your head around exactly what it is you're looking at here so one of the things we can do is we can actually put a board in. So here we're saying there's a board, it's the Ace of Hearts, King of Diamonds, Seven of Clubs on the flop, and the Four of Hearts came on the turn, and the Ten of Hearts came on the river. And let's say we have got uh, King of Spades, Nine of Spades, which in this context would be kind of a bluff catcher. It's second pair, weak kicker. So let's refresh the charts based on this. Right, so now you can see that what this is saying is that against this board, with this hand, the equity that this hand has against this board is around about here, where this purple line is here. Anything below this purple line is examples of hands that players bet that had worse equity against the board that they were betting against than this hand has against this board. The equity that this hand has against this board is around about 74, 73, 74, you can see where the purple line is. All the hands that have better equity from this player pool, and bearing in mind we're looking at 78,000 hands here, because we started with a, a player pool of about 1.8 million hands. So there were 78,000 times when uh, players faced a river bet and were trying to make a decision. But all of these ones that are marked as red would uh, be better than ours. Would uh, our, our hands that are bet that that perform better against a random hand against whatever board they had than our hand performs against a random hand against this board. So that's the concept of what we're looking at here. And what this is telling us is that just on average, this hand is going to be good thirty eight point four percent of the time. That's not putting any texture information. We haven't started filtering for any of that yet. It's just on average. The strength of this hand against this board when we're facing a river bet is good about 38.4% of the time. But we can get more nuance than this. So if we select this button here, apply texture to top filter and refresh, what that is going to do is it's going to take the texture of this board. So it's the fact that it was rainbow on the flop, a flush draw came in on the turn and there was three to a flush on the river. There was a straight draw on the flop, a straight draw on the turn and it there were potential straights on by the river. There were two Broadway cards on the flop, which included an ace. Still two Broadway cards on the turn, which included an ace. 
And on the river, there were three Broadway cards, and of course, it still included an ace, and the board never paired. The way this texture, uh, this automatic texture application feature works is it doesn't worry about cards below the rank of the highest card other than just putting the information about how many Broadway cards there were. The problem is if you started putting in all the information about uh, there was a king and there was a seven and there was a four and there was a ten, you would re very quickly run into sample size issues. And just on sample size issues, what we do by default in this top filter is we apply what's called a split analysis. So you can see here it says number of hands filtered equals 1,408 plus 1,031 plus 78,414. And it took 0.9 seconds to return the answer from the analysis from the server. But what's happening here is it separates out the filtering into the flushing and straighting status. That's the first number that you see. The ranking information, so that's the Broadway, what the flop includes, what the flop excludes, whether it's paired, unpaired, etc. That's the second filter. And then the third filter is the non-texture information. So whether the river aggressor was in or out of position, the bet size, the flop action, the turn action, and then specific position information you can put in as well. The reason it does that is because of sample size issues. If we were to turn off the split analysis and refresh the charts, you'll see we've only got 57 hands now. What that has done is taken all of this texture information and it's just applied it all. So now we're, we're only seeing situations where all of this stuff applied. The flushing information, the straighting information, the Broadway information and what the flop included and excluded. So we're down to 57 hands, which you might think is not very statistically significant, which is why the split analysis is probably more useful, but is at the expense of perhaps slightly less accurate because it's not combining this stuff um, in one analysis. It's doing separate analyses and then it's aggregating up the information. What this is telling us is that we would be good about 32% of the time here. That's roughly a pot size bet. If if we were facing a pot size bet here, this would be a balanced decision. You need to be good 33.3% of the time if it's a pot size bet. We can also add in some other information. So let's say we know that the river aggressor was in position. Let's say it was a pot size bet, so we'll add in pot. And we know that it went check, check on the flop and there was some action on the turn. And now we refresh the charts again. And this time you'll see that this last filter, instead of having 78,000, it's got about one and a half thousand. So that's had a crack at applying the non-texture based information to this as well. And now we can see that we're only good 30.6% of the time. So we, given it was a pot size bet, and there is a little bit of margin for error around this pot size bet, we're saying it's between 0.9 and 1.1, um, one representing a pot size bet, we can see that we probably wouldn't be good to make this call. But we can do some playing around with this. So we could say, okay, we know that a flush came in on the river. What if that 10 was the 10 of spades instead? Let's apply that texture. Suddenly we're good 36% of the time. So that might well be a decent call. We could also um, make some other modifications to this. So we could go back to that being the 10 of hearts. Um, but uh, maybe we could say, um, actually, rather than the ten of hearts, we make it the nine of hearts, which means that the straight never came in. So we refresh the charts. Ah, <laughs> because I put the nine in, our hand is now two pair, actually. Um, I hadn't actually appreciated that when I put it in. So obviously we're, we're going to be good 64.5% of the time. Suddenly we've got a two pair hand, which is very strong. But that is demonstrating. Um, if you make modifications to the board, how often your hands are good and how, how often your hands might not be good. What we can also do with this filter, which I find particularly useful, is rather than just putting in kind of, that's just a scenario I made up, but you can use it in conjunction with the hand history picker. There is a video available that, that discusses the hand history picker and how it works. If you go to the hand history picker and then click that button, you'll see a video dedicated to this screen. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to pick a hand here. This is a hand where I have pocket queens. The flop was nine, jack, eight. The turn came an ace and the river came a two. And I bet the flop and I bet the turn and then I check folded the river. And I was facing, when I made that fold, 
pot odds on the river of 31.7%. So my opponent had made almost a pot sized bet. And the question is, was that a good fold? Well, what you can do when you're on the screen, when you've selected a hand that has a river decision pot odds that are non zero, is you can select this analyze selected hand with the river player pool tendencies tool. And that's another way to get to this screen. And you can see it automatically fills in the board that we were just looking at, and it fills in my hand, pocket queens. And it also populates all of this information. It populates the flushing and straighting, it populates the ranking, and it populates the non-texture-based um, information. You can see that the river aggressor was in position. We know that because we checked to them and they bet and we folded. And um, you can see that the, the size of the bet was just slightly below pot, and that there was action on the flop and the turn. And you can see the sample sizes here, 967, 270, and 4,940. And this is telling us that we're good 33.5% of the time. So that's a very close decision as to whether we should have folded. I folded amongst this player pool. This analysis is telling us that we probably could have made that call just about. But it's a very, very close decision. Um, because obviously an ace came on the turn and um, a flush came in runner runner. And also there are made straights. I mean, there's been a straight on from the start. So there are all kinds of reasons why um, this might have been um, uh, just marginally a bad decision. But with a decision this close, um, you could probably argue that a fold is OK as well. It's not like this has come back and said that we're good 48% of the time, in which case it would, um, it would almost certainly be a call. But we can have a quick play around with this and we can say, OK, so... The river came a heart, what if the river came a club and therefore the flush didn't come in? And so we apply that texture. Suddenly we're good nearly 40% of the time. So if that river hadn't have been a heart, we're good 40% of the time. And that would be, based on this analysis, a call. Because although an ace came in on the turn and our opponent might have an ace, they can't have a flush. And them having a flush obviously made up a chunk of the equity that um, some of the hands that were ahead of us had in this situation. And now we're several percentage points higher than we needed to be. We only needed to be good 31.7% of the time and we're good 39% of the time. So were that to happen, this would be a call based on this analysis. There are a couple of other things to look at here. We have uh, what we call show second filter. So if we add that in, a second filter appears, which by default doesn't have the split analysis, by the way, although you can turn that on. Um, and what you can do is you can uh, refresh that. Now, at the moment, there are no filters applied in this second filter. So this is just looking at with this hand. Oh, and you, you, you end up getting the ability to enter two different hands here, by the way. So you can enter a hand for the top and a hand for the bottom. Um, but what you can see is that you've got the board and it's the same board, but this time we haven't got any filters applied. So it's telling us that just generally we're good 43.1% of the time. If we copy this other filter by using this button here, we say copy other filter, and we add the split analysis in, now we're going to be looking at two identical results. But what we can do here is we can change the hand in the bottom. Let's say we didn't have pocket queens. Let's say instead we had, let's say, jack of clubs, 10 of spades. And we can see how that hand fares. Yeah, not quite as good, but it's only just below the rank of pocket queens. What about if our kicker was really, really bad? What about if our kicker was the three of spades? You see what difference that could make. Yeah, makes a bit more of a difference. We're down another few percentage points. So you can play around with this information and you can hypothesize about what hands would have been good to call with, what hands wouldn't have been good to call with. We set this back to the two of hearts, for example as it was at the start, and then we refresh both charts. You can see that your decision here, 34.5 with your pocket queens, but here with 32.3, so there is, again, a little bit of a difference um, in those decisions. Um, one other thing that you can do is you can have a look at th this feature um, I find quite useful. Show me what I do. So by default, um, your hands, so heroes' hands from this player pool are excluded from this analysis because when you're analysing river tendencies, you don't want your tendencies being mixed up with the rest of the player pool. 
But what you can do is you can check this box here that says show me what I do. If we just copy, um, we just make sure that we're doing pocket queens for both hands. And just do that refresh again. So we're looking at the same information across both. But this time we check show me what I do and we refresh. And what this now does is it only pulls out the hands that um, me as a hero have actually played. And you can see that there aren't that many because obviously, um, you know, we're looking at um, a kind of much reduced data sample here that um, follows this kind of pattern uh, and that I played specifically. And obviously, I've been involved in far fewer hands than the player pool overall. And you can see it's saying 31.4. It's given us this sample size warning here, which if we click on that, it tells us the result or one or more of the results of it's a split filter, which it is. For this filter has a very low sample size below 50. This may lead to quite inaccurate results. Try changing the filter to include, include a larger sample size. You can see we've only got 44, 2, and 16. So that might not be that useful in terms of, of sample size issues. If we clear both filters though, and then refresh the charts. So now we're just looking at uh, general situations and now we select show me what I do. This now gives you quite a good idea of how far I am deviating from the player pool. You can see that against the player pool in general, this these, this over pair, uh, which was an over pair on the flop, but then became second, a, a pair below top pair on the turn. And then obviously a flush came in on the river. You can see that the player pool overall, this hand is good just, just generally without any filters being applied 37.3% of the time. But the way that I play, and it is with 1,023 hands, so it's not an insignificant number of hands. Um, the, the other player would only be good about 26% of the time. So this suggests that my tendencies are that I do not bluff as often as the player pool. And my hands skew far more towards value than bluff when you've got this kind of hand which... You may perceive as a bluff catcher, you may perceive as a as a as a kind of value call in this spot. Um, but it's certainly quite far down the rankings in terms of the strength of hands that are available here. Um, so you can have a look at your own tendencies and you can apply filters to these as well. You might want to say, what about when I'm in position and when the other players are in position and have a look what kind of difference that makes. Um, and so on and so forth, that different textures when the board's paired based on different types of bet sizes, you can compare and contrast um, all of this information uh, and have a look at what difference that makes. Um, there is one other thing that you can do, which I'm not going to demonstrate in this video because I'm not going to be showing you a list of the villains uh, in the games that I play, um, but there is this drop down list here and instead of saying show me what I do, you can pick specific villains and as long as you've got enough um, hands against certain villains, so if there are villains that you play against a lot, you can pull those individual villains out and you can have a look at their tendencies and you can compare and contrast how their tendencies are to the general player pool or to you or to other villains because you can put villains in the top and the bottom and compare them against each other and that might help you to make some specific decisions about when you're facing certain villains in certain situations and what you might want to do. Almost acting a little bit like a very very detailed uh, filter-based set of information um, that you would get um, from a, a heads-up display but on the river with all kinds of other filtering applied as well. So to summarise this is the player pool river tendencies um, and you can use it to analyse what the player pool does on the river when they're making bets and use it to try and determine whether you should make a call or a fold. Um, there, are, um, there is other information that you can um, put into this. So when you um, follow through on a scenario, which is available in another video, if we just go back to the main screen, um, when, if, you, if you do scenarios that are available here, either open save scenarios or start new scenarios, when you get to the river in a scenario, if you as the hero are facing a bet from the villain, it will give you the option to press a button which will take you into the river player pool tendencies screen and will automatically populate all the information from the scenario as you put it in um, and will help you to try and determine whether you should make a call or a fold. Um, if you need to make a raise, that's a different question, 
that screen probably can't help you that much with that. This is more about marginal calls versus folds or whether, whether you're in a situation where it's actually a clear call, even though you thought it was maybe marginal.